showed this severe psychological abuse that I went through and millions of other children are still going through, should it be classified as a syndrome? Let's get to the bottom of it. Hi, my name is Maddie and welcome back to the anti alienation Project. Here I talk about all things related to a certain form of child psychological abuse that I went through for 20 years called parental alienation. Parental alienation is child psychological abuse and it involves one parent using manipulation and coercive control tactics to manipulate their child to reject their other loving parent without true justification. It's a very common form of abuse, but not many people actually know how damaging it is or even what it's called. So I'm hoping to spread awareness on my project. Parental alienation syndrome this term has sparked debates in courtrooms, therapy sessions, even over dinner tables. Recently, there's been a surge of experts trying to get parental alienation syndrome into the DSM. What does that mean and why does it matter? As a former alienated child myself, I have experienced firsthand the devastating effects of being torn between two parents and made to believe lies and false accusations for years. First things first, I need to do some disclaimers. Number one, I do not speak for all alienated children. There are probably a lot of alien former alienated children out there who disagree with what I'm about to say in this video. And that's okay, by the way. It's okay to disagree and to have differing opinions. Disclaimer number two, I'm not an expert, a therapist, or a researcher. I form my own opinions based on my two decades of life experience having been alienated severely from one of my parents. And my third and final disclaimer, number three, two things can be true at once. Parental alienation syndrome may not need to be in the DSM. Does that mean that the abuse that we currently call parental alienation that can already be diagnosed as severe child psychological abuse, does that change anything about the nature of the pathology? No. When I express my opinion, I in no way intend to belittle the severity of the abuse or to invalidate anyone's experience at all. We all have had different lives, and if you disagree with my beliefs, that's okay. The free exchanging of ideas is what I think makes life really interesting and beautiful, and these are just my opinions, and if you don't share my opinion, that is okay. First things first, let's unpack what parental alienation syndrome, otherwise known as PAS, actually is. So this term was coined by Dr. Richard Gardner, an American psychiatrist in 1985. Gardner defined the syndrome as a childhood disorder that arises almost exclusively in the context of child custody disputes. Gardner used the term syndrome, and since a syndrome means a cluster of related symptoms, and he was able to find clusters of related symptoms in these alienated children. Proponents argue that having parental alienation syndrome officially recognized in the DSM would ensure that affected families receive the support and understanding they desperately need. Proponents also believe that getting parental alienation syndrome into the DSM would also help professionals identify and address the signs of parental alienation more effectively. I do respect their desire to raise awareness and provide validation for all of those who have been affected by parental alienation, as well as their desire to facilitate appropriate interventions. Despite the efforts of dedicated advocates, even recent researchers who have tried to add parental alienation syndrome into the DSM-5, the journey to get parental alienation syndrome recognized in the DSM has been met with numerous roadblocks and setbacks. The question, in my opinion, is not whether this severe psychological abuse exists, but rather, is it a syndrome in the first place? Does parental alienation cause a syndrome in the child? That's the question. Since I've been on the scene, I've been confused about why the d there are different experts and different researchers who are in different camps. I just gotta say, I've made mistakes. At the beginning of this project, I didn't know as much information as I do now, and I'm still learning a lot. My opinions have naturally changed. I've gotten new information, better information, and I've been able to change my opinion somewhat. You have the camp of experts who want to get parental alienation syndrome into the DSM. At first, 
I thought parental alienation syndrome is a thing. I thought that that's what I had. But since speaking to a lot of other advocates, child survivors, and doing a lot of my own research and thinking about this more thoroughly, I've realized that I don't think parental alienation syndrome needs to be or should be in the DSM. However, there's this other camp and they are arguing against the term parental alienation. They say that the people who want to get it into the DSM are called Gardnerians after Richard Gardner and that they're harming the movement. So you have the camp of researchers on this side who want the syndrome in the DSM. Then you have the camp of people on this side who are very against putting the syndrome in the DSM. But more than that, they're against the term altogether, very against the term. So you have these people fighting for the term and to get it in the DSM. And you have these people fighting against the term and against getting it in the DSM and they're all fighting with each other. Here's my stance on the issue. We do not need parental alienation syndrome in the DSM. We do not want parental alienation syndrome in the DSM. At the same time, this black and white mindset is really harmful and I do think there is a lot of use and a lot of reasons why using the term parental alienation in a general sense, not as a diagnosis, is beneficial, is helpful, is necessary. So I don't think either camp is 100% right. I don't think either camp is 100% wrong. I think that the Gardnerians, they need to give up their fight to get it in the DSM. But I think that using the term parental alienation and raising awareness is key. At the same time, two things can be true at once. I think that the other camp over here needs to accept that parental alienation, the term, is not going anywhere. And it's also key for pe parents and children to figure out the abuse that they've been through. I reject their insistence on getting rid of the term completely, but I do think they are accurate in not trying to get it represented as a syndrome. If you go to the National Library of Medicine to look at the definition of what a syndrome is, a syndrome is a recognizable complex of symptoms and physical findings which indicate a specific condition for which a direct cause is not necessarily understood. That's key because with parental alienation syndrome that they're proposing, the direct cause is understood. It's the parent. This doesn't arise naturally in a child. It's caused by the parent. It goes on to say that once medical science identifies a causative agent or process with a fairly high degree of certainty, physicians may then refer to the process as a disease, not a syndrome. We learn here that if a complex set of symptoms and physical findings have a direct cause, you can pinpoint it's not a syndrome at all. So I don't understand how parental alienation syndrome could even be a syndrome because you can pinpoint you can pinpoint the direct cause. It's the parent. So that brings me to my reason why I think parental alienation syndrome should not be put in the DSM. Number one, it's not a syndrome at all. If you can identify the causative agent, it would be a disease. And I don't want that either. I and many other adult survivors of parental alienation have gone on to really change ourselves, our thoughts, our our health, our lives, our interactions with others and our beliefs and almost everything upon learning the truth and getting away from our abuser. This shows me that we are not beyond help and a syndrome is something you usually have for life. So here's my proposal, because I have one. Instead of fighting to get parental alienation syndrome into the DSM, why don't we start fighting to diagnose these abusive parents with personality disorders. Because one thing I have learned and that I know to be true is that all the similarities and patterns that make up this parental alienation syndrome are coming from a causative agent or process. And that is not ambiguous. That is the parent. That is the abuse. That is the narcissistic abuse that they're experiencing. The child does not need to be diagnosed. The child needs to be removed from their abusive parent. The parent, I believe, needs to be diagnosed with a personality disorder that they actually have. 
The parent needs intensive treatment. The child just needs to be removed from the parent. The child just needs the, the custody to change. And we can call it parental alienation because when you do a Google search and you try to find resources and studies and support and information, you're not gonna find it by Googling anything else other than parental alienation. This is my opinion. I understand that people are gonna have different opinions and guys, that is okay. We are allowed to have different opinions. That is what makes life interesting. But do I want all these people focused on just getting a term into the DSM when they could be focusing, focusing on actionable ways to help kids right now? No, I don't want them to be focused on getting it into the DSM. I know that might seem simplistic, but I really do think that's the answer. What do you guys think? Parental alienation is a term, by the way, works for advocacy, awareness, and helping people figuring out what they've been through, what they're currently going through. Parental alienation is important. It's a very specific type of child abuse. But if, you, if I had been a child and they had realized what was going on, they could diagnose me with child psychological abuse, undergoing that, and they could diagnose my parent with whatever personality disorder they find. And they can tr treat my parent so that I can be loved and safe. Doesn't that make much more sense? Child psychological abuse is already in the DSM. You can diagnose all the alienated kids with that, and you can go ahead and diagnose their parents with whatever mental illness or personality disorder their parent is struggling with so that their parent can receive the help they need to stop harming their child, and the custody can be reversed, and there you go. As someone who has experienced parental alienation firsthand, I understand the urgency of addressing this issue, but we must tread carefully. We need to balance the need for recognition with the responsibility to ensure accuracy and accountability. Ultimately, whether or not parental alienation syndrome belongs in the DSM, it is a complex question with no easy answer. But one thing is clear, we need to keep the conversation going. We need to listen to all perspectives. That's my two cents. Take it or leave it. I know a lot of people have a lot of different opinions about this topic, and that's okay. I know in today's society as well, it's hard to have conversations with people who have different opinions. People just take it personally. Like, if you don't have the same opinion as me, you must not like me or something, but that's not true. Differences of opinion are what make people interesting, what makes life interesting. We should always be able to have free speech in a platform where we can share different, differing ideas and opinions, especially when we're talking about these issues. Anyway, I hope you found this video insightful or helpful in some way. Thank you for watching. Give it a thumbs up to get parental alienation in the algorithm and subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. I appreciate all of your support so much. Thank you. Thank you. I read all the comments and messages and just really appreciate how much support we have for this project. Catch you in the next one. Bye.